this uh, is is ridiculous. Oh, whoa, what? No. This is even better? I don't know what's wrong with me. Pressure's on, Klaus. This is the last TBR for the year. If you perhaps saw my announcements and plans and changes video directly before this one, I talked about how in 2022, I aim to have smaller TBRs, but we're still in 2021. <laughs> so one last crazy hurrah <laughs> before the year is out. This uh, is, is ridiculous. And um, will I read all of these books? I'ma try. I'ma try. First things first, I gotta tell you what they all are. An alarming number of them are obligation books. So, FML. Let's get into it before I drop them all. <laughs> These are in the order that I've stacked them and I've more or less stacked them by size so that the stack had some chance of not toppling over. <laughs> so first things first, Have a War by Joe Abercrombie. This is the third and final book in The Shattered Sea. As of the filming of this video, I've not yet finished the first two. I finished Have a King and I am some part of the way through half the world, hopefully in the next very few days I have left that include Thanksgiving. I will finish that along with the other books that are still on my TV that I haven't finished yet. If need be, I will polish off half the world in the beginning of December so that I can read this because one of my most more recent additions to goals for the year is to read every book Abercrombie has published in 2021. So I'm very nearly there and I'd really like to say that I've done it. So I'm doing it. I'm freaking doing it. Next up I have Mad Ship by Robin Hobb. Mara and I have been plugging on through the realm of the elderlings and next up for both of us is Mad Ship and we are both super excited. This is the second book in the Live Ship Trader series. Um, we both loved the first installment, The Ship of Magic, uh, which we read in summer, I think. And I've been very much looking forward to when we've been getting around to Mad Ship. And I think both of us have heard a lot of people say that this is the best one in the trilogy. And if the, the Farseer trilogy is anything to go by, Royal Assassin, in both of our opinions, and I think in a lot of people's opinions, is the best one in that trilogy, which is the second one. So maybe, I mean, I tend to favor the second books in trilogies just generally. But perhaps it's a thing with Hob, that in particular, the second books in our trilogies are the best. I don't know. A sample size of two is hardly anything to go by. But um, anyway, I'm excited to get through this chunky book because her Hob and Hob books do not get shorter. They just get longer. Next up I have Pine by Francine Toon. This is a thriller that I heard about last year around winter time and I thought dang it that looks like a great winter book but it was like coming out of winter not that it's ever winter where I live and I picked it up and have been wanting I've been sort of like hanging on to it as like a this winter I will read this I don't know too much about it except that I've heard really positive things about it it's been blurbed by a bunch of people the cover intrigues me it sounded dark and vibey it's not terribly long and that's why I'm reading that it is the story behind this. <laughs> Next up I have Hollow Pox, The Hunt for Morgan Crow. This is the third book in the Nevermore series. Uh, I've been buddy reading these with Vish from Books with V and we have both been loving with a capital L these books. Nevermore the first one we very much liked and we both um, finished very rapidly Wondersmith which is the second book and we're like this is even better? This is five star spoilers for my wrap up. Uh, we were like, yeah, I mean, we already planned to, you know, read Hollow Pox together in December, but both of us are like immediately ready to go and wanted to immediately read Hollow Pox. So super excited to read this. Um, and then we're just gonna have to wait until the fourth book comes out because there's going to be a fourth book and I believe it's slated to come out in the fall of 2022. So we have a, some time to wait. We kind of shouldn't have rushed through this, but I'm really loving this. And I feel like these are really good books um, for this time of year and they are a much better Harry Potter replacement than what I've read of Rick Barrier is my hot take. But anyway, super, super stoked to read this and to specifically read it with Vish. So super hyped for this. Next up, I have two books because Blades and Bodice Rippers, as of our most recent live show, we just decided spur of the moment, low key because of me, <laughs> to instead of just reading the one book, which Bethany had chosen, which Mark, and she announced this some time ago by C.L. Polk, which is an, an Edwardian MM fantasy mystery love story. I just got to talking about, and then we were like, why don't we read that too? A Marvelous Light by Freya Mars Marsky? Marsk? 
um, which literally just came out, which is also a sort of, I, I don't think it's Edwardian, I think it's Victorian, but also a um, male, male, magical, historical, romantic mystery thing. So we thought, let's read them both and compare and contrast and see how we like them and see how they do things better or worse or just differently. I heard this one specifically pitched as Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, which I love so much, meets Red, White, and Royal Blue, which I've never read and I'm not super interested in because contemporary romance is not something I'm ever really interested in. I'm rarely interested in that. So it is the Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell side of things that I'm has caught my interest. But I'm super down to see both of these books and how they do their things. And this one in particular, the cover, she's real pretty. So I really hope I like this because I would like to keep this book and just ogle it. So very much looking forward to both and looking forward to chatting with the ladies. And I believe our live show in December is scheduled for Boxing Day. So anyway, read the books and join us in the live chat. Come hang with us. It'll be very, very merry, festive, bookish fun. Next up I have a book that was one of my goals for the year. Um, I had a bunch of goals for like series to start, series to finish, blah de blue de blue. Um, so I can very pretty doably achieve this goal and that is to finish the Lord of the Rings trilogy with The Return of the King by J.R.R. Tolkien. I don't think I need to say a whole much about this. I've seen the movies more times than any human should. I have been enjoying getting to know the actual source material. And my good friend Klaus from the channel The Contradictorian, uh, he it, and I very frequently agree. And he keeps saying that Lord of the Rings, the books are like, you know, God tier for him. And having read Fellowship and Two Towers, I'm like, I think they're good, but I think they're quite dated. And I think I like the movies better. But he said that it was Return of the King that made them God tier for him, not the first two. So pressure's on Klaus. Let's see if we agree yet again. <laughs> Next up I have the book that my patrons have chosen for me to uh, vlog and review for them. And that is A Master of Gin by Pete Jaley Clark. And I'm super excited to read this. I kind of wanted to read it last summer and then didn't get a chance to get around to it. Um, I have been just hearing nothing but praise for Pete Jaley Clark. I did read the novellas that come before this full length novel, which I believe is his first full length novel. I wasn't wowed by the novellas, but I am intrigued by this world and I would very much like to see because part of what those novellas failed to do is just sort of get me sunk into this world and this story enough for me to really go along with it. I just felt like it kind of like we were in and out so fast that I was like, what? <laughs> so I'm hoping with a full length novel, I'll actually really get to like sort of sink my teeth into it. That's what I'm hoping for anyway. So another very, very pretty book that I very much hope to like purely because it's beautiful and I want to keep it on my shelf. And love it. Next up I have another series finishing goal book and that is The High King by Lloyd Alexander. This is the fifth and final book in the Chronicles of Prydain and I have been loving the Prydain journey. It started at uh, the end of 2020. I started reading the Prydain books which I'd been meaning to read ever since I was a kid because I really loved the movie The Black Cauldron and these books have just been getting better and better with each installment and someone had warned me that the fourth book, the one right before this, which again spoilers for my wrap-up, would kind of get a little more serious and be less of just kind of a whimsical adventure. And it did, and it was great. It was so good. <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, I'm kind of, I'm, I guess I'm nervous to be done with this, but I am also excited. I'm also excited to knock out one of my goals. So The Hiking, super looking forward to this. Next up, again, if you watched my announcements, plans, changes video, I talked about the fact that my friend Heather and I are going to be buddy reading and discussing on my channel the Ringsworn trilogy by Howard Andrew Jones. So on my TBR, I have the first book, For the Killing of Kings, and the second book, Upon the Flight of the Queen, both obviously by Howard Andrew Jones. Um, I will definitely read the first one and then aim to get through as much of the second one as I can so that I can finish the second one and then read the third one in January so we can chat about it. Coolies, please join us so you can come and chat with us. Aiming for like mid to late January for a chat about all three books. But let me know in the comments down below, for real, if you would like to participate in this, but that's too soon for you. That like, if, that you would absolutely read this trilogy and come chat with us, but like you need a little more time because I will absolutely chat with Heather about moving things around a little bit if people would prefer that. But for the time being, since I don't know yet what y'all are saying, the plan is still January. So anyway, hence these books being on my TBR, super excited. Next up, I have another book that was in that video because uh, I'm participating in Evie's Winter Night Trilogy read-along. I will be a co-host for the second book 
which is The Girl in the Tower. But we are starting with the first book in December, and that is The Bear and the Nightingale. This will be my third time reading it. I think I read this in January of this year. So I start the year with it and end the year with it, if that's the case, which is kind of kind of cool to bookend the year with it, especially because winter does bookend the year. Any uh, I adore this book. I adore it so much. The second one's probably my favorite, but the first two are just chef's kiss. So freaking good. So super pumped to read this again. Next up, I have a Book of the Month Club book because I want to get through my Book of the Month Club books. <laughs> And that is um, my third attempt at an Evie Dunmore book, Portrait of a Scotsman. This is the third in the Extraordinary Women series. I keep getting these from Book of the Month and I keep not liking them. So I don't know why I keep getting them. I don't know what's wrong with me. I mean, part of it is the first one I kind of actually liked until it got to a point where there was this really, really questionable consent and it's just kind of that kind of issue with the romance suddenly. And I was like, uh, oh, whoa, what? No, 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 no. Because I thought it was actually kind of cute and quippy. And I think the banter was fairly amusing up until that point. It wouldn't, wasn't like my absolute favorite. I still like Tessa Dare better. But I was like, this is kind of cute. And then we got to that. And I was like, excuse me? No, 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 no. So then I got the second one. And it didn't have any of those like consent issues. But it was just kind of, eh. It wasn't that fun or interesting. I felt very, it was very, very meh. So maybe third time's a charm. Maybe we're finally going to get absolutely wonderful consent and also a fun, quippy, bantery story. And my, probably my favorite Tessa Dare book, if not my favorite, then like one of my favorites is When a Scot Ties the Knot. So this is about a Scotsman. Maybe that's, maybe that's a good sign. Anyway, I'm hoping that's the case. So I'll, I'll let you know how I go. Next up, is the next book in the Song of Ice and Fire read-along that I'm hosting with Jimmy from the Fantasy Network and Alex from Alex Nieves. We are at Storm of Swords, which is the third book. And the live show for this will be on Jimmy's channel. And I am so stoked and also terrified to reread this book because this book is brutal. This book is super, super brutal. But it's super, super good. So uh, I also forgot how long it is. <laughs> I was putting my TBR together just now. I was like, oh God, <laughs> there's so many pages to read in a month that has holidays in it. Any hoosies, regardless, come hell or high water, I will read this and we will chat about it. And I am excited about it. I just don't know where I'll find the time. <laughs> Second to last, I have A Radical Act of Free Magic by H.J. Perry. Um, again, spoilers for my wrap up. Um, I put the Declaration of the Rights of Magicians on my TBR for November. Um, thinking that I might like it, I might not. It was sent to me by Bethany for the reason that she did not like it and was like, you're gonna have it. And sent me the second one as well. And I fucking loved it. Fucking loved it. So immediately want to read the second one. <laughs> I'm honestly like, this was one of those times, I mean, throughout I loved it. And then at the end, I was like talking out loud to the book, which is the thing I only do when I really like a book, where I was like, oh, I bet it's this, I bet it is. <laughs> Uh, which out of context means absolutely nothing to you. But if you've read Declaration of the Rights of Magicians, which is probably none of you, um, at the end, when it's hinting at like what is going to be in this one, yeah, I was like, I bet it's gonna be this. I bet it's gonna be this. I was talking to my dishes as I was watching them. I bet I'm right. I haven't actually read the synopsis of this because I don't want to know until I start it. But I'm super stoked. I just hope that it's as good as the first one because the bar is high. And last but certainly not least is another series that I aimed to finish in 2021, and that is the Poppy War series with The Burning God by R.F. Kuang. As of the filming of this video, I have not yet finished The Dragon Republic, though I have started it. I have not that many days left in November to accomplish that, but just like with the Shattered Sea, uh, I'll just tack on the end of Dragon Republic in December and also read this because I totally have room to be finishing November books and reading the books on my December for TBR, not, but anyway, I really, really, really wanna do this. So just believe in me. And that is what I aim to end the year with. Let me know in the comments down below your thoughts and feelings about the books that I have chosen for myself or that were chosen for me. Whatever you wanna let me know. I post videos on Saturdays, other random times as well, definitely Saturdays, so like and subscribe. Join my Patreon if you feel so inclined and I'll see you when I see you. Bye. Oh, <laughs> God.
good. Oh no. <laughs> oh.